I'm Gary Bembridge and I want to talk about seven things that I think Norwegian Cruise Line does better or at least different to the other cruise line it competes with. Norwegian Cruise Line is the third largest cruise line in the world based on the number of passengers. It operates in the value for money cruising category. So its big competitors are Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line and MSC Cruises. Those are the big global competitors. Regionally, of course, it has other competitors. So in the UK, I guess, probably lines like Morella, for example, also compete with Norwegian Cruise Line. At the time of recording, they had 17 ships in service and they range from sort of smallish to medium sized ships to large ships. They range, for example, in size from the Norwegian Sun, which has 1,936 passengers, to Norwegian Escape, which has 4,266 passengers. Those are all based on double occupancy, so they can actually carry more passengers than that when they have kids or, for example, sharing cabins. They're also the only major international cruise line that has a ship that is actually flagged in the United States. And that's the Pride of America, which is based in Hawaii and sails itineraries around Hawaii and the Hawaiian Islands. So let's take a look at what I think they do better or certainly differently. First of all, freestyle cruising. Norwegian Cruise Line invented the concept of freestyle cruising. And what they mean by that is they've built in an enormous amount of choice. So there's multiple dining venues, loads of bars, loads of entertainment venues, a wide range of entertainment and pretty relaxed informal service and also dress code. So it's a very informal freestyle kind of you cater and do what you want to do with lots and lots of choice. So you can pick and choose what you want to do. So let's look at what that actually means from a practical perspective. Well, from a dining perspective, they have huge amount of choice. Built into your fare, you will have some dining included. So you'll have the main dining room option with multiple dining times as per usual. You'll have a buffet dining option and then there'll normally be one other sort of more specialty restaurant which is included within the fare. So for example, on my most recent Norwegian cruise line cruise, which is on the Encore, it was actually the local. So that was included within the fare. But the range of specialty dining, specialty dining does have an extra charge is huge. So the Encore, which as I mentioned was my last cruise, there was 12 different specialty dining options. But across the fleet, there are almost 20 different dining combinations that you can choose from. They all do have a charge and the charge varies based on the specific restaurant. You could have an American diner, Brazilian steakhouse, a French restaurant, an Italian restaurant, three Japanese restaurants. You could have a teriyaki, a sushi and a kind of fusion restaurant. Mexican seafood. So as you can see, pretty much international cuisine with a wide range. Not all of those will be on every single ship, but there will be a lot of choice. They also often have different treat venues. So you might have things like Coco's, which is fantastic milkshakes and chocolates, Dolce Gelato, which of course is gelato, and The Bake Shop, which is a partnership with the very famous celebrity baker. On some of the ships you also have, which is one of my big favorites, you have a fully operational Starbucks. On the ships, and again, depending on the size of the ship, there could be up to 22 different bars, lounges, or entertainment venues. The dress code itself is pretty relaxed. You'll find right across the ship, they don't have a formal set dress code. So even on their sort of dress up nights, they call it kind of dress up if you want to when you go to dinner. And some of the smarter specialty restaurants, they do ask you to dress more smart casual, but it's very relaxed. So if you're looking for a relaxed cruising with a huge amount of choice, you're definitely that's one of the things that I would say Norwegian does better than anybody else. The other thing that Norwegian Cruise Line does really well is cater for different passenger types. And the first one that I really want to pull out is solo cruising. If you're a solo cruiser, you'll know that it can be really expensive to cruise on many cruise lines because they charge up to double for an occupancy of a cabin. Norwegian have really gone really hard and aggressively to cater for solo travelers. And they've created on, at the moment, six of their ships, the studios for solo travelers. This is a great little key card controlled area they have only solo cabins. There's a lounge which will have some complimentary snacks and breakfast during the day, a great chance to meet with other solo travelers. And, but you can only go into that area if you have the key card. So it also adds a sort of layer of, of extra security for people traveling solo. The only downside of those is they are all inside cabins and they are pretty small. So if you want a balcony, this is not going to be for you. But they really do make sure that they cater for solo travelers really, really well. And I think this is a really, really great concept. You'll find the studios for solo travelers on the Escape, the Bliss, the Breakaway, the Getaway, the Epic, and also on the Pride of America. 
One of the things that I think Norwegian Cruise Line does phenomenally well, probably the best of all of the cruise lines, is their premium ship within a ship. So a lot of cruise lines have created those ship within a ship concept where they put their premium suites. Norwegian does it phenomenally well. I think they do it the best. And they have what's known as the Haven. So in the Haven, you have all of the beautiful suites, which can be multiple bedroom. But also in here, you have a concierge. You also have a dedicated Haven lounge and bar. You also have the Haven restaurant. So all the suite guests eat in there. And then you have a beautiful pool deck area with your own swimming pool and hot tubs. It's a very premium, prestige, beautiful, beautiful creation. And you also have butler service. I do think they have really got the ship within a ship concept down the absolute best across all of the cruise lines. The other thing that Norwegian Cruise Line does different to other cruise lines is they've really focused on sort of what I call branded or named entertainment. So you'll find across all of their ships, they will normally have a big, full-on Broadway West End production. So it's not a review type show like many other cruise lines, it's the full-on production show. So you'll find on some ships they'll have shows like Priscilla Queen of the Desert, they'll have Kinky Boots, they've had Jersey Boys. So you'll find big, full-on Broadway production shows with often the cast which have come from either Broadway or the West End on those shows. Also on Norwegian ships in the past, I've seen the Blue Man Group. Also more recently, they've got Burn the Floor, which is that big well-known dance show that is on around the world. It's kind of, I guess, like a sort of a franchise. And even across the ship, they'll have other themed entertainments, like in the Cavern Club, they've got like a Beatles tribute band. And on other ships, they've also got kind of a dining theater concept where they've got a partnership with Cirque du Soleil, and that's called Cirque Dreams. So definitely they've gone for well-known, big, high-profile shows on their ships, and this is something very unique to Norwegian. The next area that I think they do extremely well, and you could argue it may not be as different as some of the other points, is their resort features. But they are pushing the boat out on these, if you excuse the pun. So on their bigger ships, they've started to build in more and more resort features. So for example, on Encore, they had a full-on go-kart track, which you could go racing around on go-karts. They had a massive big laser tag section at the back of the ship. But also within the ship, they have a big arcade center where you can do 3D, 4D games, and even they had more traditional arcades. So they are building in lots and lots of resorts. They have water parks, water slides, and just fantastic resort features. Their kids clubs are also pretty phenomenal. They have guppies for the very young ones. They have Splash Academy for the sort of mid-aged ones. And then they have the Entourage Teen Club, which is a really funky, fabulous sort of place. So Although other cruise lines do the resort features phenomenally well, like Royal Caribbean, for example, I do think that what Norwegian is doing is a little bit different and they really do it extremely well. To get many of those resort features, you do need to go on some of the bigger ships. The other thing that I think they do a little bit differently, but certainly do really, really well, are their Caribbean private islands. So many of the cruise lines now have private islands in the Caribbean. Norwegian, so at the time of recording, has two of them. The one which I've had for the longest, which is Great Stirrup Key, and also the newest one, which I think is really fantastic, which is Harvest Key. So Great Stirrup is in the Bahamas area, and Harvest is in the Belize area. Harvest Key is a fantastic resort. It's very pristine. You can have zip lining, very premium bungalows where you can go and hang out. There is scuba and snorkeling. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful island. I think they do the private islands phenomenally well. The other thing which I think Norwegian do differently and I think is very exciting is they are making the ability to make your cruise more and more all-inclusive. So although it's not a totally all-inclusive fare, they are offering various different packages and they have different names I've seen over the times. But at the moment, they're calling them, so at the time of recording, the free at sea packages. And what you do is you pay a extra charge per person for the whole cruise and they bundle together a number of their packages. So you get a beverage package included, you get some special dining package included, you get a Wi-Fi package included, and you get an excursions package included, which includes basically some credits towards the cost of excursions. Now you can traditionally buy those packages separately, but pretty much every single Norwegian cruise that I've looked at has had the ability to tag on those free at sea packages. So you know when you book, you've got your fare and you've bundled together all those extra costs. So it helps you manage the total cost of your cruise. Hope you found that helpful. I have loads more videos 
packed full of tips and advice about all things cruising. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?